is up hammerheads welcome back to the forge today we're making a tripod that'll convert into a spick stay tuned The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this about five inches. Now, my bend will actually probably be closer to six inches because I'm making it to where it has a little bit of a point or a section up here to where you can drive it in. So, the section that will be from here down will be about five inches. You can go a little bit longer with that, especially if you're doing a bigger tripod. But I'm doing, like I said, a little bit shorter tripod, so I'm going right at five inches. So when I bend this, it'll be more like six inches, like I said, but when you measure the other side of it, it'll be right about the five inch mark. So I'm gonna center punch this and then get it hot. Trying to keep everything as straight as possible, guys. Now I want it closed right here, guys. Making it sharp, I just want to close up. All right, so I'm going to quench this back section and everything up to about this point so I can get a good bend and it doesn't start opening up on me that down just one more time. going in my hardy hole if you don't have a hardy hole it's all right you can do this by hand just a little bit more I was measuring it to the one that I just did pretty close we can tweak after so I'm gonna cool this down and then I'm gonna move around and make the spike on the other side okay guys we are just gonna be doing like what we do with sorry guys lost my train of thought um, just making a blunt point on the end like what we would do with a leaf. The only difference is, is I'm rotating it every time I hit so to keep it in the center. Come back a little bit so I don't get that bump on it, but a little bit more heat and just keep rotating it around so you get your point. It doesn't have to be super sharp guys, you just don't want it to be where it's uh, too blunt either. Looking for something about like that right there, guys. All right, guys, just getting everything straightened back up. Gonna 
Hold this down. Now we're going to make our ring and then uh, hammer out the other spike. Now remember when you're making these, you're going to make two holders with your uh, with the little V or U shape in them. And then you'll do one ring. Alright guys, make sure you do not make your ring too small. kick it back once I get it closed up. Got it hotter in one spot than the other. My cord has been acting up today. I don't know if I'm going to have to go do a little bit of maintenance on the uh, my burners uh, at the top or not. I don't know. It was making some weird noises. It ended up leveling out, but we'll see what happens. And I'll admit, guys, messing with a longer piece of steel by yourself is a lot harder to do. Now remember, I'm using half inch. You can use a little bit bigger material. Uh, five eighths works very well. That's what we use a lot of times. And guys, it's a lot easier to do this right here with a jig also. I'm doing everything by hand. Like I said, I'll get everything straightened up here in just a second. But I'm doing everything by hand because I want you to see what it looks like doing this by hand. You don't always have the jig to be able to make one of these with. So being able to look at it, seeing how to do this just by hand and taking it as you go. You know, sometimes the metal moves just very easy. Sometimes it fights with you. It depends on how cold it is outside. If it's a really cold day, your metal will cool down really fast. Uh, if it's really humid, you'll get a lot more forge scale. So it's, those are things that you might you need to slow down and think about, guys, as you're making stuff, especially bigger projects. Uh, if you're not able to go back into the forge with it very fast, or once you get it bent, you might not be able to go back into the forge with it. So, things to think about, guys. All right. I'm trying to hold it close and it's you know five foot long sometimes you'll struggle with something whenever it's that long there we go now if you're using thicker material you are going to need a bigger center I'm using half inch I don't need as big do a slight bend on it we're gonna knock it back I would tell you the angle but I don't know you'll just knock it back and check everything to make sure it fits up right okay depending on how tall your uh, tripod is and a couple other factors you'll have you might have to tweak so once you cool it down check everything all right gonna kick this back Get everything good and straight. 
and I'm gonna kick it back. I don't want a bow in it, I just want this top half bent down a little bit. As you can see, with my hammer about like this, okay? I don't know angles very well, guys. I, I failed geometry. So, now, I'm gonna cool it down, flip it around and go ahead and draw up the spike. I'm not gonna show that again because you've already, you know how to draw out a leaf. Um, but, then we'll go down and we will, I'm gonna go down to the campsite, get it set in the ground and show you the configuration you can put it in. All right guys, so here it is kind of set up in the spig position. You can drive these in the ground deeper. Um, I'm just showing roughly how it will set up. There is a burn ban here in Tennessee right now, so I'm not able to build a fire here in the campsite. It's one of the reasons why it's overgrown and everything is I haven't been able to do anything in about five or six months. Um, but drive it into the ground where it's good and sturdy, and then your bar will set in like that. Now, I'll show you how it looks with a tripod also. Okay, guys, with your tripod, making sure everything looks right. Yeah, we look right. All right, I'll back it up so you can see it all together. But you want your bent end to be facing in, then you get your other two pieces, which are your supports. Hook everything together. Sorry. There you go, guys. Bring that leg around a little bit. Get everything kind of stuck. Whoop. Sorry, fighting with it. <laughs> everything kind of stuck in the ground. Pull that around a little bit. One more level. There you go. All right, guys. So this is your tripod. Back up. Put together. Now, I'm going to talk about one of the two things we're going to be making. We're going to be making a hook called a trammel hook, which will hook right in here and hang down. Now, a trammel hook is an adjustable hook. It'll be about this big. It's made out of flat bar and round bar. So we'll be using a piece of, uh, it'll be about one inch wide, quarter inch thick, and probably about foot and a half, two foot long. And then your other piece is going to be three eighths round bar. That's going to be the same length. And what it has is a series of holes in it where you can adjust it up and down. We are also going to be making the prongs that hook onto your uh, spick, which is what slides in and locks in place and holds the meat in. It's the sharp pointed things that slide in and lock the meat in place. So when you're rotisserie and turning the, in the spick turns, the meat won't fall off. And we will be actually drilling and doing a set um, screw, or we'll probably do some finger bolts so we can slide that in and tighten it up. We will be doing those in the next two videos. So let me adjust this up, guys. I'm gonna stay out here and we'll get real and talk about what, we're, what we learned today. All right, guys, so let's get real for a minute and talk about what we learned today. Well, we made our tripod spick. And this is a lot easier project than what it lets on to be. I used to be intimidated by these a lot until I've made them and they're really not hard to make. It really is three steps, three or four steps. You know, you, you make your points, make your blunt points, you make your eye, you make your two bends with your hooks on them and you're done. Uh, if you want to put decorative twists in them, you can. Uh, I've seen that done a bunch. I've seen it where they're not done that way. It's kind of up to you whichever way you want to do it. I might end up going back and reheating these up and twisting them uh, just because I don't know, I might want to. I haven't decided yet. But let's talk about our individual pieces real fast. Let me set my phone in my pocket. So first, let's talk about our eye. Well, let's first talk about our metal. Now, because I'm on a little bit of a hill, these are roughly the same height. Now, if yours do not turn out, say yours turned out like this where they are a little bit off. When you're putting them together, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure you get it as close as possible for you. Now, if you're making these for a customer, start off with a little bit longer piece of steel when you make these. And you can always cut off and adjust how you need to. And then when you go to make your foot in the, or the spike that goes in the ground, 
you just measure everything and cut off what you don't need and then make your spike and then everything's a lot closer. If you're making it for yourself, it's not the end of the world. Just whenever you set it up, just allow for that. One leg might be kicked out a little bit further than the other. It's not gonna affect the stability of it unless it's really off. Like if it's like this, that ain't gonna work. So if they're very close within half an inch or something, you're gonna be okay. Um, so when we are making our bins, you make two of these identical as possible. We're not drawing anything out. All we're doing is making the bend and I tried to hammer down, let me see these down real quick guys well actually man the ground's hard here in tennessee right now today all right when you're making this bend guys make sure you leave mass here because this is where you're going to drive it into the ground whenever you're using your spick i try and I, I actually boogered that one up so i'm fix it i will fix it but try to make this into more of a v-shape instead of a U shape. It works either way, but I like that the metal locks into one side at least. So when you put it on as a spick, your, 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 uh, if your meat's heavier on one side, the whole thing won't roll and you keep cooking just one side. You can rotate it and lock it into place. Remember when you're doing the spikes on this side, guys, you see that it's a blunt point, but it tapers. You don't want this super sharp because you do not want it to get bent or dung dinged up in the ground if you hit a rock. You want it blunt so whenever it goes in, it can push past or even possibly bust through a small stone, but without messing up your material. Now. Wow, our ground's hard right now. Oh, they're gonna stay. There we go. We haven't had a good rain in probably about two months, guys. So that's why I can't actually build a fire and show you how this works. Now, on your eye, if you make it a little bigger, it's okay. If you make it too... I scared me. <laughs> All right, back to what I was saying. I thought they hit me. Um, if you make your eye a little too big, it's okay. You don't want to be massively too big. But if you make it too small, your legs won't adjust out far enough for you to be able to... Uh, get it to where it sets in the ground sturdy. Uh, other than that, guys, this is a really simple project, a really fast project. We use all the same basic skills that we started out with in making a J-hook, really, and making an eye bolt. Now, I suck at making eye bolts. I always have. It's something I probably should practice more. Get this as round as you possibly can, and make sure you have a really good heat when you go to make it. If you have a jig, it's a whole lot easier but if you don't have a jig, do the best you can. If it's a little oblong, it's not gonna hurt anything. As you can see, everything still stands up and works perfect. So in our next video, guys, uh, well, our next two videos, I don't know which one I'm gonna do first yet. Uh, we're gonna be making, again, the prongs that slide up and hold the meat in place. And we're gonna take a piece of half inch square bar that we're using to make the prongs to be able to drift out the eye so everything fits up on this perfectly. We're also going to drill and tap an eye, uh, or drill and tap a hole, so we can put some uh, finger, finger tightening bolts or something like that in it. And we're also going to be doing a trammel hook, like I was telling before, where it's an adjustable hook so you can raise pots up and down off the fire. So guys, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I can't wait to see what kind of spick tripods you guys make. So be all, by all means, tag me on Instagram. Um, put Refining Fire Forge, um, you know, and tripod or something. You know, do those tags. Um, you can also, uh, shoot me some photos on Facebook or uh, Facebook and, uh, on Instagram or something like that. Uh, and on, I think I'm on X too. Um, yeah, I'm on X also, which used to be Twitter. So guys, uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. I will see you on the next one. God bless. Keep hammering.